to the stage one of the graduates from the program. I know you will love him. Please welcome Mr. Ken Cole. James Bond villain. Right. Uh, you're right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm small, I'm evil looking, and I have an affinity for cats. Uh, but you know what? I think I'm actually made the best James Bond villain because I'm so small I can hide anywhere. Which makes me the perfect assassin. That's right, I could hide in your closets, I could hide in your cupboards, I could hide in every crevice of your house. I could hide behind a very large pumpkin. <laughs> I could hide inside of the pumpkin. I'm so small I could hide in between the letters M and P of the word pumpkin. That's just how small I am, guys. I could hide in a ripple of time, a stitch in time. I am so small. I could hide in a stitch of fabric. That grease in your pant leg? That was me. But, uh... I'll tell you what's not small. <laughs> Ikea. Ikea? <laughs> That's not small. Man, huge. Ikea is gigantic. Such a big place for only four letters. Man, uh, have you ever noticed when you go inside of an Ikea and you just start walking, it seems to go on and on and on forever? Man, even George R. R. Martin is going, when will it just end? <laughs> Man, have you ever dared to deviate off that path? <laughs> Feels pretty good, right? <laughs> kind of dangerous, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Perhaps the first step towards the life of breaking back. <laughs> One day you're buying crystal bowls, the next day you're cooking crystal meth. <laughs> Man, it's so big, I tell you. People that went in 1989 are just starting to come out now. Yeah. Families are being reunited after so many years ago. It's a lovely thing. Man, and I tell you, when you get in there, they do not make it easy for you to get out. Even Chilean miners are like, look man, I am not going back in there. I've been actually by uh, a lot of my furniture comes from Ikea. Uh, I guess I'm just too lazy to afford good taste. Uh, and I recently bought a bookcase and I brought it home and I assembled it. And what you know, I actually messed up on it. That's right. I had an extra piece of wood left over. You should not have an extra piece of wood left over, all right? Uh, and uh, man, it was one of those things, you know? Ah, uh, really, really bugged me, you know? And uh, I realized that it wasn't just that, it was my bookcase too, right? The back part of the bookcase. Yeah, you know that back part that's supposed to slide in between those roofs? Alright, so here, I have the bookcase, alright? So, like, my knees are like the first shelf, and the waist is like the second shelf. It's supposed to slide right in with the spine, right? And mine went, it didn't go down all the way, and it just sort of like, there was a bit peeking over the top. And every time I walked by it, it was like just a constant reminder of all my failures in life. It was like, hey, Ken, Ken, huh? Huh? Yeah, you messed up again, huh? You're a loser, huh? Yeah, don't turn your back on me! Remember high school? That's right. My bookcase is a bully. Man, I, I wish I could say that this has been the only time that it's happened, but it's happened three. Out of the past five bookcases that I have assembled, I have messed up in some weird way. I tell you, my place is looking less like an apartment and more like the island of Dr. Moreau. Man. And I realized, you know what, okay, I, I could never be really a good architect, but I tell you, I would make a great eye doctor. I love going to the optometrist, it's so much fun. I love that sense of satisfaction you get from reading the chart. It's so nice, right? I was there recently, and my optometrist, he told me I actually have a freckled birthmark on the back of my eye. And I thought, man, even my inner beauty has body issues. <laughs> Man, you know what? Last time was actually, uh, uh, my coach also administered a colorblind test. I am not colorblind. In fact, I scored 100% on that test. Yeah! Thank you. I didn't even study. And so I realized, you know what? It is about time that my eyes get the recognition that they so truly deserve. That's right. I want my eyes to be recognized by their peers. I want an Oscar for my eyes. I want the oculars. <laughs> and I can just imagine 
being there. And they're going to announce the winner. And they say, and the winner is, and they open the envelope. And they say, the winner is Ken Hall, 100% not colorblind. <laughs> and I would cheer, and I would go up and high five, and I'd shake hands, and I swear I would give the best, most gracious, wonderful acceptance speech. It would be like, oh wow, thank you. Uh, wow. Um, I just want to say that uh, growing up in Toronto, <laughs> my bookcase has said I never meant it. <laughs> but you've heard them differently. Thank you so much, everyone.